I've, I don't think I've ever seen Bankai's Pokemon Trainer play. Like, I know he's played a lot on stream and everything. I just haven't seen it. Personally. Same, actually. Uh, I feel like I've only seen it maybe, like, once or twice. Uh, I know that, like, Ivysaur is the, the, the favorite child out of the, uh, the Pokemon, but I feel like Squirtle brings a lot to the table in this particular fight just because Squirtle can go in so easily. Yeah, um, but I, I just feel like, uh, it, it can be kind of hard for Squirtle because Palutena can stuff out a lot of those approaches with their hitboxes, and Ivysaur, Ivysaur is a character that has a lot of power and a lot of range. This character honestly has it all. He's got the survivability. That has character the is OD. That, that up air is insane. It's crazy. Up air and down air are both out of control. Yeah, down air is actually intense. But Charizard on the field. This is no stranger to uh, to us. This is a character we've seen time and time again. But that's all we're seeing for for now. And just like that, Palutena does not care because Bonkai changed for the recovery and the weight of Charizard. And Palutena just killed Charizard at the top at 100. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's in Bankai's best interest to stick on Ivysaur as long as he can. And I don't think Squirtle is a bad option, personally. Although it's mm -hmm. one of those, like, early to mid percent kind of characters just because his combo game is really strong. But he can't really tango at high percentages. He's one of the lightest characters in the game. He's very small. He's susceptible to getting gimped. It's, it's a rough life. Yeah, and, you know, Bankai retaliating by switching to charge and then catching Jen's uh, landing option with an up smash, which is a really strong move. Now let's see what uh, let's see what Bonka get get anything you know started with Squirtle because he's been getting stuff started with Ivysaur and Charizard, but not much with Squirtle. I want to see how it plays out. And just like that, uh, he's still coming back. Vine Whip is a phenomenal tether. And that was good DI by uh, Bonkai because if you don't DI away in time, you hit by the down to that ledge is going to confirm. And I'm not sure if that was an attack cancel or not, but um, that definitely just confirmed. So yeah, it was kind of gross. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Like you see what this character can do, and it's like it's no wonder why we have so many good ones in New York. Character wild, man. So yeah. something fun I learned about uh, the way that trainer works when switching the Pokemon, it's actually determined on the uh, the pose that the trainer strikes. Because even though the camera's not focused on the char the, the the human character, they're doing various random things, and the quickest animation is whenever you use a special move. So if you want to see Bankai switching his Pokemon quickly, you'll often see him throw out a special move. With Ivysaur, it'll be like Razor Leaf, Squirtle, it'll Ooh. be, I think, the Side B or the Neutral B. Charizard, it's, um, I think, Flare Blitz. Yeah. But that but, confirmed by Bankai was disgusting. Oh, he DI'd in on that. He DI, like, if you, you DI, DI in, that's completely true. You can't DI in on this character. Yeah. But that was... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Good stuff by Jen. He was pretty much in control of the whole game, but damn, that 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 combo by Bonka was disgusting. He did razor leaf in the up B. I've never it's, seen that before. I've been so I don't, good. That was <laughs> that was disgusting. Like up B can change its angle ever so slightly, and it's so reliable to kill. You can angle the vine whip from 90 degrees up to 45 degrees forward, and that's a pretty solid range. It's wow, a really good range. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like I, I was saying it earlier. 45 degrees of range, man. That's crazy. Like. Cannot sleep on Ivysaur. Ivysaur is kind of crazy. Yeah, but you also can't sleep on Palo. Palo is definitely crazy. <laughs> That's facts. Game 2 is bringing us to the town and city. Um, now, I don't know if it's like a conscious decision from Bankai to start Squirtle or if he's just like just yeah. rolling with it because you naturally start Squirtle. You can well, choose which Pokemon you start. Yeah, like I, I, I understand because like Squirtle is a good character. Very good character. Like Squirtle is fast. Good combo. Good combo infinitely. Good follow-up options and... And whatnot. It's just um, and right now you can see he's getting off to a fast start. But that's I feel like that's the common consensus between like most Pokemon trainers. And like, I, I like what Squirtle brings to the table here. It's just like all the percentage that Ray's able to build up on Squirtle just makes it such a harder battle for Ivysaur. I feel like if he switched to Ivysaur a little bit earlier, gets his zoning game going, tries to confirm his kills. That was disgusting. Look at that. Kit, I don't know. That looked like a frame trap, but that was completely disgusting. <laughs> because there's, there's such little recovery on Vine Whip that you're able to cover the option with the up air. Yeah. Like you were talking about how crazy up air is earlier. There you go. Right yeah. in practice. And Jen, but Jen is keeping Bonkai at the ledge. Um, but Bonkai getting up by switching to Squirtle. And he got out of that combo also. DI'd it perfectly. Took the opportunity to get himself into Ivysaur, but... Yes, and 
Yeah, good punish by Jen. Knew knowing that wasn't the true combo, just landing, pressing down and back and getting that grab. Ooh, you're getting... Okay. That was a good response from, from Jen. Using the neutral air, not just because it's going to be able to combo into something or, and give uh, Polly good advantage, but it lingers long enough that you're able to catch the Pokemon switch. Yeah. Also frame traps in other moves, so even if he does whiff the air, he can follow up another area. Yeah, and trying to time that um that parry to catch the end of the multi-hit, but did not work out for him. What a goon option. Yeah, he just he just did it twice. <laughs> Ooh, did he try to get nagged? Dra Dragon up there into something and explosive flame. Yes. Such such a such a good uh, option when people are recovering off stage. Ooh. I thought he was gonna try to get the follow up out of it. You can get down yeah. air into up air, and if the DI is whack enough, down air into up B. Like, obviously their combos look so legit. Yeah. Characters looks so cool when he's actually doing what he wants to do. Yeah, but Jen, Jen with the beautiful DI though, um, just getting out of that situation. And Jen at 150% trying to get the most out of, most he can out of the stock. Okay, good space forward tilt. Let's see, he's, now he's definitely trying to go for this grab because it grab and kill, but so we're forward here? And <laughs> 49 is not a lot of percentage built up. This is actually fairly doable for Bankai. Yeah, and Squirrel is a character that can rack up some damage. Oh, punish that perfectly with the back air. Double spot dodge. Yeah, between Nair and back air, there's plenty of options at uh, Ivysaur's disposal for getting in. But now we're at those percentages where Bankai plays his cards right. He can set up for uh, plenty of kills. He just needs to get Jen in the air on his own terms. Oh, and he got out of the explosive flame with the Pokemon switch. He's going to have to rely on the Charizard switch at this point. He's not going to have enough time to switch back into Ivy Sword. Oh, yeah, no, not at all. Because you have to go into Squirtle, and going into Squirtle right now is not the nah, yeah, that's, that's a suicide at this point. Yes, good DI away by uh, Bankai, not getting hit by the down throw back here. No. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm surprised that... I was going to say, Bankai, the way Bankai spaced around that punish and went for the back, I was surprised that whooped right in his face, but... Oh, yeah, that, by Bankai. that was a really haphazard end to that match. Yeah. Like, there were multiple occasions where it looked like both of them could have just been gone. Yeah, actual scramble situation, man. Like, that was, um, that was uh, you know, good stuff by Bankai. You know, just stealing that last stock because Jen... <laughs> Jen was coming for him. Jen was coming for him, and... Um, and knowing that he couldn't switch into any other Pokemon is a very good thing he did not force the issue. Because some players will force the issue and try to switch the Pokemon at any cost, but you know, you, you sometimes you have to stick it out. Yep. And that's good stuff. Okay. Game 3 is finding ourselves back on Smash. Well, given how close that game was, I don't really see any reason why the stage would uh, want to be switched. I also feel like this is a really good stage for Palutena. It's just that Bankai played it really well in the previous yeah. game. All right now, Bankai getting, getting a quick start with Squirtle right now. He's he's almost like a like a hybrid of like Pikachu and Mario the way he, the way he combos people vertically and horizontally. A lot of his combo game reminds me of uh, Diddy Kong from Smash Four. Mind you, it's not nearly as oppressive, but yeah. like that forward air especially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I respect that. Right, trying to read the roll to take the stock early, but man, Bankai and Squirtle's putting in a lot of work. These players got to charge their goddamn controllers. Come on, guys. Come on. Guys, we're in 2018, 20, 2019, excuse me. It's even less of an excuse for your, for your controller to be dying during the tournament, guys. That shit would actually be a tragedy. I don't even want to imagine that. Okay. So the reason Bankai held that flame was to try to get the two frame so he could get the punish with the down smash because he probably couldn't snap after that. I respect it. Great recovery by Jen going completely to the other side of the stage. Now let's see if we have. Oh, let's we'll see. Let's we'll see if we can get off the ledge and then get up attack. Dash attack, paying dividends as well for Jen, making use of the upper body invincibility comes with the move. And it's honestly, it's something you have to leverage against a powerhouse like Charizard because one quick aerial, all of a sudden that stock is cooked. Yeah, and Jen using that back, you know, that back air efficiently because that move, just like the dash attack, has a shield on it, and it will always win if I'm not mistaken. So. Okay, Razor lift in there. Ooh! 
Red, red the spot dodge with a back air. The movement from Bankai looking good too. Okay, look. now let's see this edge guard. Yeah, Jen. Yeah, Jen just keeping Bankai, you know, away from the ground, but Bankai fighting his way down. Right, he's gonna get axed there, but he did such a good job of extending that stock with Charizard, just getting the little hits here and there. Yeah. Solid. Now he has solid 70% to zero on Bankai's part. Yeah, withdraw is such a good move to pressure. It's it's a bit of a gamble because there's a lot of things wrong with the move, but you don't take any damage if you have to trade. And it, it does a decent amount as far as knockback is concerned. Its damage is respectable, but that's whatever when you consider that it could net you total stage control. Okay, so he's definitely going for some type of frame trap on stage. But the space in the Bankai with these rares are, you know, just proving to, you know, proving to be strong. Yeah, it seems like Palutena is out of the down throw uh, Vine Whip range now. Okay. Although, I... Alright, switching to the Charizard makes it irrelevant, but I feel like he still would have been able to get forward air to, uh, to Vine Whip. Yeah. But that switch by Bankai was pretty clutch, because if um, Jen hit that punish, he, he would have been off stage and in a difficult situation, because Palutena at the ledge is no joke. And even though Charizard's the bigger target, he's, it seems like Bankai is more confident with boxing out in the air with this character, which makes sense because Charizard has very strong aerials. Yeah, and something that Charizard's been strong in even since Smash 4 is his boxing game. Up close, Charizard can hold his own. So being up close to Charizard uh, isn't that bad of a situation, but this is a situation where it's kind of bad for Charizard. Getting off the ledge, he's a big body. But good DI is keeping Bankai in it. He's not going to be able to attack that up. Yeah. Yeah, he had to recover low because of that explosive flame. Ooh, that neutral. Oh, okay. Try to... Up tilt it up or whatever the punish would be. All right. Strange. But I like how he opted to just go right to Charizard after he saw Ivysaur wasn't working out. He can't afford to take that extra damage. Yeah. And <laughs> Charizard's got plenty of the kill potential. Just like that. I feel like Bankai has been taking most of these stocks to Charizard for there. But... Oh, it's a good aerial. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Jen tried trying to read that jump with the, the neutral lead. Ooh, Not okay. able to find an in now. Jen playing very defensively, and I like it. Playing a lot to follow tennis strengths, but... No. The air dodge. I think he wanted the neutral air dodge. I don't think he wanted the down air dodge. Neutral air dodge would have given him enough time to come back with Vine Whip, but directional, too laggy. Yeah, because pro probably what happened in the situation that when Jen hit him, he tried to just air dodge and then fast full so he could get out of that range, and then uh, he just did all at one time. So um, That's tragic. Yeah. It, was, it was very well played on both halves. Yeah, man. Good stuff. 